Meet Arnold. He had a difficult childhood. Now he's making up for lost time. Did you know, Arnold, that there are 15,000 nuclear warheads in the world with a combined capacity of about 7,500 megatons? You should also probably know that five minutes ago, I sent one of them in your direction. There's no point hitting the gas, Arnold. The electromagnetic pulse wave killed all the electronics modern cars are so chock full of. Next, you're going to be hit by the shock wave. Even if this old rust bucket were made of solid graphene, which at the atomic level is even stronger than diamond, and you somehow miraculously survive all this destruction, you're still going to go through living hell. Wake your skinny ass up, Arnold. We need to check how far you are from the epicenter of the explosion. Remember, if you see a mushroom cloud, stick your hand out in that direction and raise your thumb. If the cloud is bigger than your thumb, then you're in the radioactive zone. What a lucky guy. Do you have sunscreen? It won't help, you dumbass. I'm joking. You should run away from here. Fast. Radioactive isotopes in small quantities have already begun to slowly destroy your DNA. How do you feel, my friend? Yes, that's right, it's a good time for a shower. Avoiding contact with contaminated items and using special water procedures can increase your chances of survival. Do you have a water filter, Arnold? Even the weakest radiation will result in progressively malignant tumors. Well, congratulations, you got through a nuclear attack, and you no longer need a Halloween costume. But this isn't the end. If someone in the world launches a missile with a nuclear warhead, a domino effect will follow. All the nuclear powers of the world will let loose their dogs of war. Then comes the real apocalypse, Arnold. The era of humanity is likely to end. You're gonna die, my friend. It's time to get out of this universe. Something unexpected has happened. Do you remember the movie The Devil's Double? The one where a rich boy forcibly turns another person into his double and then sends the clone instead of himself to dangerous meetings and stuff like that. So, yeah, we need you to help out one of my acquaintances. You'll replace Kim Jong-un for a day. Can you even imagine ruling a country with a population of 25 million people that obey, adore, and extol you, and only you? But, to be frank, they don't have a choice in the matter. Many things that most people see as normal over here are only allowed for you over there. For example, wearing clothes from the best European designers or eating Nutella. While you're engaged in important state affairs, your huge house is guarded by a platoon of armed soldiers, an electric fence, and a minefield. Even a nuclear explosion will be repelled by its walls, which are covered with lead rods. Now get ready, because we're going on a trip. Kim said that he wouldn't survive doing this for a second time, and it all looks pretty suspicious. So you're going instead. Your personal armored train starts its journey straight from this house. Its speed doesn't exceed 60 kilometers per hour due to the enormous weight of the cars, which are sheathed with armored plates. Just for today, all of this is in your possession. The harvest this year was quite unsuccessful, as you can see, and 10 million people may die from hunger, sure, but 15 million more will still remain. Guys, you'd better not go in there for about 20 minutes. Okay, fine, if that's for the state's security. Only the president can use the mobile toilet. All urine and stool samples are collected to monitor your health and make sure that no spy, God forbid, finds out about your illnesses. The best room in the whole city was rented just for you. And after leaving, no one will even think that the president stayed here. The security service doesn't leave a single fingerprint or hair from the glorious ruler. Everyone's already waiting for you. Say nothing. Just smile and wave your hand. I just knew that the U.S. president wouldn't send a meeting invitation on WhatsApp. Hey, Arnie, are you sure it's okay to take pictures here? Arnold, I have bad news. All governments all around the world have been overthrown, and they're now each ruled by dictators. Yes, on the one hand, it's good. No one will leave their countries anymore, and everyone will work for their country's well-being and standing in the world. But on the other hand, under such regimes, most people won't live in houses or residential complexes, but in prisons, because the laws of the countries will be 
very strict and sometimes even really strange. You can forget about the benefits of civilization. After all, foreign economic relations aren't needed anymore, and each country will now work just for itself. But what that means is if before there wasn't any heavy industry in your country, like, for example, making vehicles, now you won't be able to get a new car, and all you can ever hope for is some crappy bicycle at best. And I'm not saying that all social media has disappeared, but now you can only have private conversations with your friends somewhere deep in the woods, and with the radio turned up really loud. And now, even if you want a haircut, your hairstyle will need to get an approval from the local administration, and there are just a limited number of government-approved hairdos. But what's most frightening is that all countries now suspect each other of being a potential threat. So, almost all resources of every country are invested in military buildups. And alas, one of these days, somebody's gonna break down and hit that big red button. Arnold, you saved the world! Who would have thought your colorblindness would save the planet? Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean! I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're gonna shoot the explosion on it, and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter. Or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! While the race was taking place, Snot and Gob would be arranging a barbecue for themselves. It seems that even the normal temperature of the sun isn't enough to grill their infamous pan-galactic gargle bangers. Oh. Ah, now that's much better. Oops. Solar flares like these are not good because they usually disable all the power plants and electrical appliances on the Earth. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it. The crank current is too low. 
To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow, just be careful with your finger. Well, at least we survived. And the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. <sighs> Another evening session of degradation watching mm. TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space. And space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent! We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of six kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're gonna have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnold, how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state? Decided to hang out in the park, did ya? Looks like this burrito was out of your league. Quick, find something to drink. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or... 
Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected! It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you going to use your immortality? Got it. You'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay, and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly. But you will lag behind in progress, and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Oh, Arnold, you came back just in time. The sun is dying and turning into a supernova, and you got the best seat to see the death of our solar system. Say goodbye to planet Earth. One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years, and then the last remaining source of food will be... <laughs> Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future! Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes, he needs your help! That's why you're going to the year 2050! Oh dear, that's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. 
The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! Mother of God, it's a dang dinosaur! Oh, Arnold, you scared me. I see you decided to visit the Paleo History Museum. It's really cool here. Even Orochimaru from Naruto is here. I heard he knows secrets of resurrection. He can bring dead things back to life. What the heck? No. He's using it on the dinosaurs. Run, you dang fool! Dinosaurs are very dangerous, whether it's herbivores, carnivores, or even those radical dinosaurs. They're insanely angry, and you would be too if you hadn't eaten in 66 million years. Furthermore, the dinosaurs are getting even angrier now that they see what happened to their descendants over the course of evolution. All the world's leaders have declared martial law. Alas, very little is really known about the true behavior of dinosaurs. It seems the best solution they've come up with is to hire a rabid turkey specialist. Yee! Attack! Dinosaurs reigned on Earth for 160 million years. But the fall of a meteorite changed the course of evolution and allowed for the development of our ancestors' mammals. Now, only the strongest will survive. But what in tarnation's going on now? Wait. I think I get it. Over the last 66 million years, the Earth's climate has gotten colder, and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has changed. It looks like dinosaurs can't live here anymore and are going to die out once again. Hmm, what to do? In theory, we could build a Jurassic Park. We'll feed them and artificially maintain the climate. This place could be the most profitable tourist spot in the world. And we'll also be a global supplier of eggs and manure. Dino poop. But then again, an ordinary dinosaur eats a ton of grass a day, or more than 100 kilograms of meat. More than likely, the dinosaurs will eat all the fauna in the park and then probably start eating each other until they die out again. No matter how you slice it, the dinosaurs just aren't going to be able to live in our time. Do you really want to save them, Arnie? The only option is to send the dinosaurs back to the past, to their perfect world. Time to say goodbye, Arnie. At least there, you know they're going to be better off.
What are your plans for today? Hmm, maybe the plan for today is try not to die. Are you scared, Arnold? But what if this is all made up? What if I told you neither King Kong nor Godzilla could survive on Earth? It's pretty simple. Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was 2 meters 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. There Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. But what about the fact that there are other giant creatures on Earth, like whales? Well, everything can be easily explained. The density of water is higher than the density of air and is almost equal to a human's density. That's why we can float on the surface of salt water. This means that the habitat itself supports the weight of living things. For example, whales, whose ancestors 50 million years ago looked a lot like a dog with hooves. Godzilla and King Kong could not exist on Earth at all because of our friend gravity. But let's say we turn off gravity to scientifically allow for the existence of Godzilla and King Kong. Everything on Earth that isn't fixed to the ground would take off into space. That includes people who, if caught in the open, will be shot off into the great beyond. And those lucky few who find themselves in a room somewhere can still live for some time until the houses eventually fly upward. And in the end, our planet will completely crumble into pieces. Therefore, in order to destroy the Earth, you don't need to wait for a fight between two giants. You can simply turn off gravity. Hey, Arnie. So oh. you're not busy right now. Let's play a really popular game everybody knows. The floor is lava, but here it's real lava. Cool, right? This is what an ordinary children's game can lead to. Global catastrophe. Don't touch the floor, Arnie. The temperature of lava can reach 1,200 degrees Celsius. You can move around using any items you see. But remember, the chair will burn up in just three seconds, your bed will disappear in five, and your TV will melt faster than a single TV commercial. Come up onto the roof. Hey, don't fall off. If you fall into the lava, you'll get a serious burn that'll destroy all your nerve endings and boil your subcutaneous fat. But on the bright side, this does mean you won't even have time to feel how the lava burns you all the way to the bone. Get it together, man. Oh no, you idiot! Metal constructions will always heat up the fastest, you dimwit. But take it easy. Even if you fall, you won't drown. Lava is not as liquid as it seems. Counterintuitively, its density is even higher than that of concrete. As for walking on lava, you simply need special asbestos boots just like geologists use. Wow, it's getting hot! At this temperature, all the water in the oceans will boil and turn into a ginormous pod of fish soup. It's time to save the world's last fish. But really, the worst thing is not the hot lava, but what happens when it cools down? As it loses temperature, lava creates acid clouds of steam and gas, and they contain teeny tiny glass particles that are dangerous to humans. But don't worry, soon the whole world will turn into the Hawaiian Islands, which were formed after volcanic eruptions. Ah, a dream come true, Arnie. Now you live in Hawaii, but alas, without an ocean. Welcome to the year 2100. This girl has contact lenses that connect to the internet. She can look up any information about you in just a few seconds. 
Here you will die as a virgin. Get inside. This space elevator will lift you up to an altitude of 35,000 kilometers above sea level, straight to a huge ring that turns the energy of the Earth's rotation into electricity. To your right is a human body part shop. Let's go inside and look for a replacement for your unfortunate finger. This doctor can recreate an entire organism from only the genome. So all the zoos here are teeming with dinosaurs, dodo birds, and even Neanderthals. You want a snack? 3D printers print food from artificial animal cells, synthesize flour and minerals, and it tastes better than food from 2019. What a wonderful world, right? But it all could turn out quite different. Nuclear war, global warming, pandemics. This could also be our future. Science is a double-edged sword. We can use it for good, or we could all die from it.